Well, the streaming wars are coming courtside, and Overtime is here to win. The sports publisher has aggressively expanded its social media presence, even launching its own basketball league to ensure fresh content. The company recently, recently added entrepreneur Damon John to its board as it eyes further expansion. Joining us to discuss, we've got Dan Porter, Overtime co-founder and CEO. Um, Dan, it's always good to talk to you, but I, I want to see if we can start with the bigger picture, because, you know, we've been talking so much about individual sectors, companies who are starting to say, we're, we're seeing a bit of a slowdown right now on the horizon. I wonder what you're seeing in the sports media space. Are we starting to see a bit of a pullback in investment? Well, it's, it's a good question. I, there may be a pullback in investment. I don't really have visibility to that. And I think investment cycles take longer than just how fast the, the current market cycle has been but at the end of the day sports fans are sports fans and so the irrespective of <laughs> it doesn't matter to them whether the stock market is up or down or crypto is up or down or inflation is anywhere like sports fans are about passion they love their teams they love athletes and they continue to stay engaged so i think for us like there's no place we'd rather be than kind of at the center of passion right now and it, it tends to be fairly agnostic uh, in, in, in terms of just the general macro environment. Hey, Dan, Brian Chung here. Great to have you on the program. So anyone that's on Instagram or, you know, loves sports has seen the overtime account before. But tell us about how you're differentiating yourselves from the other types of media that exists out there in the sports world. It's a lot of community kind of in, individually sourced type of content. How does overtime take that content, turn it into a business model that you can scale up ultimately over time? For sure. Uh, so what we've really focused on is really actually trying to build a community. And so I think people get very focused on social media or publishing on social platforms as kind of an end all be all thing like, oh, you publish on Instagram or TikTok. How do you make money? And I think for us, we look at social platforms as the greatest form of brand building, of marketing, of community building there is we we don't we don't have a chief marketing officer we don't have a chief brand officer like all of these things happen through the relationships that are afforded by social platforms and if you can build a very engaged fan base you can then move to the next step which is kind of owning and launching sports ip so we have OTE, which is a basketball league. We have OT7, which is a, a football league that we've launched. And, and all of that is possible because we don't look at social platforms as just a place to put a bunch of videos and try to monetize them. We look at them as a place to have a dialogue with the next generation of sports fans. Dan, last time we had your co-founder on, we were talking about the launch of your league overtime elites. Of course, that pays uh, high school players six-figure salaries. And yet since then, um, the sports landscape has, has shifted really dramatically as a result of athletes being able to cash in on the college level, on their name, image, and likeness. I wonder if that's created competition for you. I would say that, again, people get very focused on, on the dollar amount as if that's the only thing that drives the athlete. And so, sure, I mean, we we pay athletes. We, we tend not to focus on people who are going to college, but but slightly younger. Um, it, it doesn't have a big impact on us, but I, I think when you look at the landscape of how athletes train, develop, and get better and build a professional career in this country, which is which is obviously the only country in the world where you know we focus on high school and college as the pipeline to professionalism, that athletes are coming to us not just because they want to get paid, but because of the training, the way that we're rethinking the, that whole entire path. So it, it, in a way, sure, more people spending money in, in the market and, and reaching out to athletes has an impact, but, but ultimately it really hasn't had actually a large impact on, on our business. It's, it's, it tends to be very focused on kind of recruiting a players to come play at specific colleges, and we're, we're not trying to get in the way of that. In fact, this year we launched a scholarship program which says that athletes can come play at Overtime Elite, OTE, and they they are on a scholarship. We don't pay them and they preserve their eligibility. So in, in that sense, now we're working in harmony with all these other folks. 
Uh, big picture, Dan, what is the appetite for, let's say, for example, in the basketball world, content that's not just in the NBA? I mean, this is a big tide change from, let's say, 10 or 15 years ago when the only way that you could see, let's say, for example, high school basketball highlights was just going to YouTube and searching, you know, Ball is Life Mixtape 8 or something like that. So when you take a look at just the, the, the hunger among casual even basketball fans to look at content like this, what does that look like and how does Overtime try to make sure that you can continue to grow that base? Content in general around basketball has obviously been driven by the enormous success of the NBA. And I think that there's there's a there's a lot of highly engaging, you know, powerful stuff there. But but at the same time, you know, it, it's vastly widened the aperture. So as as basketball or even football has gotten more popular, people want to know more. They want to follow the journey of the athlete sooner. They want to follow the journey of the athlete before they get to pros. They want to see you know, kind of the full spectrum of that. And it, it, it's similar to other spaces where you could say, well, you know, if the only thing that people care about is Drake and Kanye West, well, now there's a whole bunch of people who want to know who the next Drake or who the next Kanye West is, who want to kind of feed that appetite as those things become mainstream. And, and that's really where we've played in, in that ecosystem. And I think the real core to that is that a lot of kind of that has been, you, you referenced those other companies, a lot of that has been very niche. And what we really focus is on making it more mainstream, widening the aperture so it's easy to follow that journey. So it's easy to kind of fall in love with that athlete. And, and what underscores that is obviously we're a media and a, an IP platform that is built on the next generation of fans. And what does the next generation of fans want to see? They want to see people who look like them. Uh, finally, Dan, you've got um, Damon John on your board now. Of course, he's been instrumental in building out so many brands. You've already got an established brand online. What do you see as the next step for Overtime? How are you looking to expand? Our focus has really been on launching our owned and operated IP, our intellectual property. So it's like a fancy way of saying we want to have our own basketball league. We want to have our own football league. I, I think you will see over the course of the next several years, probably three to five different kind of sports leagues that are wholly owned. And so if you think about it, overtime underneath becomes this platform. And it's a platform about community, about digital know-how, about talent, about social media. And then on top of that, you have these sports leagues, which build and generate their own rabid fan bases and generate media rights and, and sponsorships. And that, that really becomes the vision, how you go from kind of as a fan, like finding somebody that speaks to you, finding an account, a brand that speaks to you, and now having an, a way to engage at a deeper level. And, and we believe that the future is around IP and, and sports league ownership. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of doesn't matter what the economy is. As I said in the beginning, you still love your team. You still want to participate. You want to follow your favorite player. And that's exactly where we're playing. Well, it's exciting to see the expansion, just how quickly you guys have grown. Dan Porter, Overtime co-founder and CEO, appreciate the time today.